Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 3. Paul's Boyhood, Part 4. Mrs. Paul was almost of a size to match her husband. It took forty-seven grizzly bear skins to make her a fur coat, that is, one of those short ones, and one of her skirts used up more canvas than a full-rigged ship. She was affectionate and lovable, and everyone said that Paul was mighty lucky to get such a wife. The only difference between her and other women was that of size. With her, the measurements were yards or rods instead of inches. As for Babe, the great blue ox, just where Paul got him has never been learned. It is thought that he secured him when but a calf, being attracted by his strange blue color, and reared him from calfhood with great care. The ox well repaid the kindness of his master, for he was with him through all his logging operations and was continually performing labors that could not have been done in any other way. The great blue ox was so strong that he could pull anything that had two ends, and some things that had no ends at all, which made him very valuable at times, as one can easily understand. Babe was remarkable in a number of ways besides that of his color, which was a bright blue. His size is rather of a matter of doubt, some people holding that he was twenty-four axe handles and a plug of tobacco wide between the eyes, and others saying that he was forty-two axe handles across the forehead. It may be that both are wrong, for the story goes that Jim, the pet crow, who always roosted on Babe's left horn, one day decided to fly across to the tip of the other horn. He got lost along the way and didn't get to the other horn until after the spring thaw. And he had started out in the dead of winter. The great blue ox was so long in the body that an ordinary person, standing at his head, would have had to use a pair of field glasses in order to see what the animal was doing with his hind feet. Babe had a great love for Paul and a peculiar way of showing it which discovered the great logger's only weakness. Paul was ticklish, especially around the neck, and the ox had a strong passion for licking him there with his tongue. His master good-naturedly avoided such outbursts of affection from his pet whenever possible. So here was Paul Bunyan at last, no longer just a husky youngster, but a man full-grown, and with a wife to care for. He was ready to embark upon his life's work, and, having a pretty definite idea of what he wished to do, he decided to return to the part of the country where he had been born. More people were living along the coast and moving steadily inland. Sawmills were being built to supply the growing demand for lumber, and woodsmen were making greater and greater enroachments upon the ancient and far-reaching forests, to provide the logs that were needed in ever-increasing quantities. Paul, foreseeing that with his great strength and his unequaled knowledge of the woods, he would have little trouble in getting plenty of chances to show what he could do. He packed his tools and other belongings, said goodbye to his parents, and, with his wife comfortably riding along the broad back of Babe, set out for the town of his origin. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3. 
and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.